Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a podcast from PJTN that focuses the light of truth on vital issues in today's headlines that impact every American. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore, founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, and I'm here to educate, motivate, and activate you to action. I want to arm you with the truth and the facts you'll need to fight and preserve our constitutional republic and uphold the Judeo-Christian values our nation was founded upon. Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a PJTN podcast where we shine the light of biblical truth on vital issues from today's headlines that impact every American, Jew and Christian, people of faith and people of conscience. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore. If you missed the last episode of this podcast, you will find it and our previous podcast lineup on our website at pjtn.org, as well as all the other platforms that you use to access your favorite podcasts. On this week's podcast, I have invited Dr. Sandra Alfonsi, PJTN Senior Academic Fellow, back to the program. Dr. Alfonsi oversees our textbook reviews and training. She is also involved in drafting our white papers on education. I have invited Dr. Alfonsi to join us this week as we discuss PJTN's most recent white paper that we published for Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, titled The Status of K-12 Education Today in Florida. I also want to remind you that it's important for you to listen and share this and all of our previous podcasts with your family and friends so that they can become more informed about this and other related issues that threaten our republic and the state of Israel. So please remember to like and share. Dr. Alfonsi, welcome back to PJTN's Proclaiming Justice podcast. It's a pleasure to be back with you and with PJTN, and I'm happy that you invited me. Well, the feeling is mutual. I so enjoy all the work that we do together, and I'm so grateful to have you on our team. You play such an important role, especially in light of everything that we are dealing with with regards to education, K-12 through education specifically. But um, I just want, for our, our audience... PJTN is releasing a statement this week announcing the presentation of this most recent white paper to Governor Ron DeSantis that is exposing the anti-Semitic content in textbooks that our children are being exposed to statewide. And we are witnessing a rise in anti-Semitic incidents on our K-12 campuses. Most recently, uh, the incident that occurred in Miami with the Archbishop Coleman Carroll Catholic high school soccer team that used anti-Semitic tropes against the Sheikh Hillel community's high school soccer players. This was not Coleman Carroll's first incident. In fact, they played another Jewish school soccer team, and the same complaints were lodged against it. I know it's difficult to speculate, but Dr. Alfonsi, why do you think we are witnessing this upsurge in anti-Semitic incidents among our young people? Well, to be very honest about this, um, I think that it is the indoctrination of our young people. Now we know that it's critical race theory, but we know that it actually starts at the kindergarten level and it moves upward through 12th grade, that it has been 10 years that we've been having the training and indoctrination in critical race theory. And I think that the that there are two, uh, two movements within the education system, and they're very strong across America, and they are, unfortunately, in Florida, they are just as strong. With the help of, of Governor DeSantis, uh, there's been a pushback against critical race theory. There's been a pushback against core, but it, it really, common core, it really isn't enough. And I think that the anti-Semitism is being taught to them. They're being indoctrinated with it from, I, let's, I would say honestly, kindergarten through 12th grade. And that that's where it's coming from because we have simultaneously, side by side, we have critical race theory. We have the Black Lives Matter curriculum in school. We have basic the basic racism that 
exists in uh, in their home lives in their mm -hmm. and all of this put together we have the rise in the anti-semitism because we have a school system now when i say a school system i'm not focusing in, uh, on florida i'm just talking about the united states we have a school system which is teaching that it is okay to be anti-Semitic because that is exactly part of critical race theory, white mm -hmm. privilege, and the anti-Semitism goes side by side with what they are taught in their churches, what they are taught in the in everyday life at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we notice it now. But if I have to make a judgment call on how, what is actually the role of the church in this, or what is the role or the lack of role of the parents in this? I would have to say that, yes, those are elements, but the greatest the greatest problem that we face in America in anti-Semitism is critical race theory and the black matter at school curriculum. And we have the other problem which has to be discussed is that uh, the state standards for teaching history, mm -hmm. studies, et cetera, they do not reflect any training to break the indoctrination mm -hmm. so through the standards and then we have we have publishing houses that follow the standards but we have a publishing house such as Pearson that mm -hmm. is flagrantly anti-semitic so that therefore their textbooks are a constant reminder that it is all right to be anti-semitic so this white paper that you recently published, you show some of the examples of the content, the, the critical race theory content, the anti-Semitic content, the um, revisionists. I mean, let's just put all of this together because we also have a problem with Holocaust revisionism going on. We see this happening um, within our curriculum. So tell us, Dr. Alfonsi, or share with us some examples that you found that are troubling to you with regards to the content in these textbooks, because this is outrageous that this is even going on. And you would think that here we are, you know, it's 2023 and we would be over this. We would not even be, we wouldn't have to address this issue. But it is coming in. It's been creeping in for some time. We saw it a decade ago when we found that textbook with the, um, the quote that legitimized Palestinians blowing themselves up in a Jerusalem restaurant because they were waging a war against Israeli government policies and army actions. Now, that was a Pearson published textbook. And it wasn't just the anti-Semitic quote. It was the anti-Israel content, the anti-Zionist content that was being shared with these kids. So tell us some of the examples that you found as you were doing your research for this white paper. Well, I, I'm going to start with what I think is the beginning, which is the, the anti-Semitism in the civics textbook. And because it's imperative that we look at the civics textbooks because that is where the US Constitution sits. And we've proven really beyond a doubt that the first area of study uh, in doc where the indoctrination started was in civics. Now mm -hmm. that was by mistake. It was, there is a reason that civics education was targeted by critical race theory. And the reason being that in order to foment uh, a, I call an intellectual revolution in the United States because it mm -hmm. hasn't the streets yet. The civics has to be the first area because that is where the United States Constitution and its promise of um, equality, mm -hmm. its promise of freedom of religion, and its promise of freedom for racial freedom. Mm -hmm. We find in uh, in the textbooks in Florida that um, the definition of civics education, and I, I'd like your, I would like the, the members who will listen to this to 
to understand what is how it is defined so that we know why we are having such a problem. Civics, this is a quote, civics education means an educational program that emphasizes contextualized instruction, that means you teach by context, mm -hmm. on the and responsibilities of citizenship, naturalization procedures, civic participation, and US history and government, for what purpose is to help the students acquire the skills and knowledge to become active and informed parents, workers, and community members, end quote. Now, the first problem that we find is that there is no mention of, of the fact that we are a constitutional republic. Mm -hmm. The that the rule of law, and this is the very basic problem. The United States was founded as or based on the Judeo-Christian tradition. And the right. rule of law actually is the name for the Mosaic law. Now you have you have in the in civics now the fact that the United States the con is a constitutional republic has been removed from the civic standards and therefore the 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 publishers have absolutely no they have no mandate, not even mm -hmm is the word reason, they have no mandate to put any of this in because the state has not has not put it back into the, the civic standards. And that was what you and I discovered when we were asked to review the civic standards and come and write the new ones, that the civic standards under which Florida had been functioning for five years had already been permeated by globalism, had already mm -hmm. had many of the problems, and therefore if you think five years and you look at the standards are K through 12, they are not just nine through 12, they're K through 12. The problem is there from the very beginning. Right. And the, the morality and the ethics of the United States being based on the Judeo-Christian tradition is, is missing. So mm -hmm. when you look at this and I look in, and you know, we studied it, we looked at it together, what's, how do you find the the elements in the textbook? Well, we started with a book, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, HMH Social Studies, Florida Civics, Integrated Civics, Economics, and Geography mm -hmm. in 2018. Now, how do we know that there's a problem? We We have to look. The Constitution is what authorizes the the human rights and mm -hmm. when moved when it's removed from the textbook it is removed from society and we we tend not to think and not to, to look at it and this book is one in which what I found the the constant constant repetition that America is a democracy and is not constitutional republic that provides the the basis mm -hmm. for how it is taught mm -hmm. and found this and then everything that concerns the constitution was deformed mm -hmm. and is the 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 constitution and this is a quote from the textbook the constitution can be changed by two ways formally by amendment and informally by government acts or by custom. It doesn't mean anything. And when mm -hmm. the students study it, they have no idea that the, first of all, Article 5 of the Constitution, and this is where everything disappears, the amendments disappear, and the amendment which, which provides for, just as an example, provides for uh, religious freedom, and you have the chapters that say that only the blacks were discriminated mm -hmm. against their housing. Well, the Jews were never discriminated against because they don't appear, appear in textbooks. Mm -hmm. But more precise is the fact that from the Constitution, actually the amendment to the Constitution, the wording in the textbook has left out the word religion. And so it has it has disenfranchised the, the Jews. Mm -hmm. but, this is where we, the publisher, 
is to is to be blamed and held really held responsible for it. Now, I think that 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 is it's very important that we understand that the teaching system in the United States was once a very firm. It was a firm system. Um, it did not teach. It did not teach discrimination. It did not teach any of this. It did not indoctrinate. It did its best to teach history, and it right. and the civics in the textbooks. When when I was growing up, and and when other, you know friends' children were in school, and I was looking at their textbooks. Nothing changed until we started to see indoctrination come into this in, into life. There was always anti-Semitism. There was anti-black. Mm -hmm. There was anti-everything. It's human nature, but that is not indoctrinated. Was not indoctrinated in the U.S. school system, and it is now. Mm -hmm. So, this is something which, which I think is very important. Now, this is one. This is, there's a book called, and it was put out by um, Florida Transformative Education. This was mm -hmm. the 2016 ed edition. We just came up with, we met this book and we met the new edition with even greater problems. But this is from 2016. And why I think it's important is that this is what the book says. And I'm asking you know, your, your members and our listeners that, they pay, they pay attention to this, and since they can go back and listen to it, because it's critical when we address textbooks, it's critical that we read not only the line that's in between that we're looking at, but in between the lines. And when we have, we get a feeling that something has been omitted, mm -hmm. it's incumbent upon us to go back to the original text and see what the problem is. And I think this one is the May, is a major uh, a major example from this book in 2016. And this is the quote, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station, which the laws of nature entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to, to the separation. Mm. Now, that's the end of the quote, but there's something horrific that's missing. Yes. There are four <laughs> words left out. And the four words, the exact quote from the Declaration of Independence, the four words omitted and of, the, of nature is God. So... The laws of nature is supposed to be the laws of nature and of nature's God, end quote. Right. Mm -hmm. Omitting it, we have to we have to have a feeling, and that's what we have not taught our children to read in between the lines. Mm -hmm. And we do not look at their books because if you would look at the book and you get a feeling that something is missing from the Declaration of Independence, you pick it up and you get the Declaration of Independence, and you read it, and what that is exactly mm -hmm. what is missing. Now, where does that come from? And it's important. I, I find the fact that, that we're always talking about the anti-Semitism without any realization is that what impacts on the Jews will impact on the Christians because of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Correct. So mm -hmm. the omission... The omission of uh, and of nature's God, it belongs to the. This is the anti-Judeo tradition, mm -hmm. Judeo-Christian tradition, and this is the globalist agenda. The globalist agenda is already has pre it precedes mm -hmm. it pre anything with the name. It precedes the critical race theory, the Black Lives Matter uh, curriculum in school. Mm, this is so important, Dr. Alfonsi. And I just want to restate, unless you read the textbooks, and I'm speaking to our, our audience now, unless you actually go and get your child's textbook or you go to the school library down the street from your home, if you're a taxpaying citizen and you read the Declaration of Independence, and it's not just going to be in this book, the omission 
of facts, the omission of portions of the Declaration of Independence, leaving this important aspect out is crucial to our Judeo-Christian founding. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, if they can cut down the tree, then the branch that we are grafted into falls with it. We have got to teach our children about the Judeo-Christian values that our nation was founded upon. George Washington was opposed to anti-Semitism. How do we know this? Because it was the, the Jewish community in Rhode Island, in Newport, Rhode Island, who wrote to him after the revolution, asking him, how will the Jews fare in this newly formed, these colonies? How will we um, fare? Where will be our rights? And President Washington didn't pen them back an article or a, a letter. He went and he visited them personally. He quoted from the book of Isaiah. And he said to them, you too will sit under your own vine and fig tree and you will know peace. He wanted the Jewish community to know that here in this newly formed country, that they were going to be able to enjoy freedom. Their days of wandering would be over. And unfortunately, from that period of time to present day, we have forgotten that. And we have allowed, we've tolerated anti-Semitism in this country. We're allowing it, we're tolerating it once again in the streets of our communities, in our children's classroom. And it is unacceptable. God will judge us, ladies and gentlemen. Genesis 12, 3, God is very clear to Abraham that he's going to bless those who bless you, Abraham, and he's going to curse those who curse you. And he who ignores you, Abraham, he God will utterly destroy. And that is the Hebrew translation of that next verse. He who ignores you. We can't even ignore our Jewish brethren. We cannot ignore the state of Israel or we will be judged. So, Dr. Alfonsi, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have to make this point to our audience. This is not just, oh, you know, this is a nation's blessing, and all the nations will be blessed through you, Abraham, and your descendants. So this is, it's very troubling. And yes, as we were reviewing these books, looking at the content, you know, we thought Pearson would learn its lesson a decade ago when we exposed what they were teaching our children, but unfortunately, not so much. Dr. Alfonsi, please. Share with us some more examples of what you found as you were reviewing these books. And and just one more point I want to make. CRT is anti-Semitic. So critical race theory, ladies and gentlemen, because the Jews are omitted from being a minority group. And in fact, there was one book um, that I know you had reviewed where you shared with me that the greatest contribution that the Jews made to America was the bagel. And I've had more people, I've told more people that, and they laugh. And I said, no, that's not, that's not something to laugh at. That's, it, that's outrageous that that's the best. When look at the contributions that the Jews make ha- and have made throughout, throughout the centuries. Look at the technology, even today. Look at the technology that we benefit, benefit from, from Israeli ingenuity, from the Jewish mind. Look at the, the advancements in cancer that we have seen coming out of Israel. We did, a, we did a show, and for our audience, you all have probably seen our Focus on Israel show where we talk about the strides that the Israeli scientists have made in treating cancer, um, in, in helping people to walk, people that are, that are confined to a wheelchair. They're giving people the actual opportunity by creating robotics to allow these people to get up and walk again. Uh, don't even get me started. <laughs> you, you, do very, Alfonsi, please. you do very well when you're started. I enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> I just want, I will go on to more examples, of, but I, I wanted to 
to piggyback on something that you said that the anti-Semitism uh, has always been here. The difference is the nature of the anti-Semitism because in the earlier years, basically it was discriminatory. It wasn't physical. It was discriminatory. It was the 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 right the the rights that the Jews have eliminated for equal housing, um, equal employment. But it it was discriminatory. But it did not have the nature of the violence. We have now a different type of anti-Semitism in the states. We it's not it, what before there would be individual examples of someone being beaten and that it it those were limited and the actual discrimination against the Jews I was born and raised and grew up in Washington DC the discrimination against the Jews was based primarily on the uh, the housing on housing discrimination and they took care of that and will you know there were plenty of examples in the textbooks but Pearson and uh, and McGraw Hill partnered on a, on a book, and the the brilliance of it. It took me a while reading the sentences over and over again to say, "There's something missing. How can they? How can they do a whole chapter on housing discrimination only against Black Americans, and there was no discrimination against the Jews? And we had we had a terrible time when growing up in Washington. We were only allowed to live on certain in certain areas." And go into certain certain school systems. So I knew that it was there, and I knew that it became it was against the law to state it openly. It became against the law, but it never stopped because they just didn't say no Jews wanted. But they made mm -hmm. it very clear that when you tried to rent or tried to buy, it was very clear. But the, the what I call you're used to my terminology, the genius of Pearson and McGraw Hill in that textbook is that in quoting the amendment to the Constitution, all of the rights granted, the mm -hmm. one that was eliminated in the textbook was the, the, was the religious freedom. So religion being removed, discrimin discrimination was, was against sex, it was against the ethnicity, it was mm -hmm. everything, but the word religion was removed, which means in effect, the textbook plagiarized and changed the amendment to the Constitution in order to eliminate and, and focus everything on the discrimination against the Blacks, which leads us into to a question that when you, I, I, I remember when I called you with that example about the bagel, mm -hmm. but the same book, this is how, how schooled their authors of the textbooks are and the publishers because they needed in the book, in the time period to put in Jonas Salk with his discovery on the, for polio, the polio vaccine, they needed to include him, but nowhere is his, he is a scientist. Nowhere is he brought forth as a Jew. So they mm -hmm. have the same thing. And it's part of the bigger, the bigger pattern in um, in the textbooks, because of critical race theory, is the ongoing elimination of the presence of the Jews in the textbooks. Mm -hmm. And if you eliminate them from the textbooks, they have been eliminated in, in really in essence, they've been eliminated from every every contribution of Amer the American Jews to American society. Mm -hmm. and, has been eliminated, and by changing the amendment to the Constitution, not only have you eliminated the the Jews from the from the the textbooks, but by eliminating religion and the freedom of religion, then they're gone from everything, and they have no protection under the Constitution because, in the end run, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. So this, right. this is one of the one of the major problems. But this is something else that that. I found I found a, a statement. This is in the McGraw Hill Civics, Economics, and Geography. Now, this book is from sixth through eighth grade, and grades, and it's published in 2018. So we have we have omission of fact, 
and then we have actual error. So this is this is an error. This is not even a half truth. This is an error where the book states many of the <coughs> excuse me many of the territories held by the United States today were acquired through conflict at the end of the 19th century or during the 20th century. That's that is the quote. Most that's not even a half truth. It's so. Mm-hmm. Not factual because most of the territories were acquired either by purchase and or treaty. So mm-hmm. there you have an example of of showing they're teaching anti-Americanism. Now, how do you teach anti-Americanism? You show now, and this is a, a terrible parallel to make, you show the United States as an aggressor. Yep, it's exactly It's exactly what we're doing, what we have seen happening. You know, when we found that textbook by Pearson that had that quote in it, Dr. Alfonsi, as we researched the book from cover to cover, not only was there the anti-Semitic angle, but it was anti-American, anti-Judeo-Christian, our values, and we warned people back then, if we do not get rid of these textbooks, this was not just being used in Williamson County schools here in Tennessee. This textbook was being used across the country. It had a different label for the state that that it was being used in, but basically it's the same books. They just may change the, the, the state that is using the book in order to comply with the the standards or the requirements in order to try to get their book purchased by that state department of education. And, Correct, and no one and no one looks at that carefully enough to pick it up. You you read the book, the title of the book is the same, and then underneath it says Florida State or Tennessee State or whatever the state edition, mm-hmm. and I, it's the same book, but it's produced for Florida, it's produced for Tennessee, it's produced for out on the West Coast, and I'm like, how could it be the same book? Mm-hmm. And because the the following of the of the standards, they don't match the standards. They don't look mm-hmm. at the standards, and and it's it's very dangerous because the the anti-Americanism, the formality, the formal name is that it's anti-American exceptionalism. Mm-hmm. American exceptionalism wasn't the it was not meant to be military might that goes out and conquers and takes that it didn't it wasn't the america america as the aggressor it was where we suddenly became the policemen for the world and but the mm-hmm. american nationalism was economic it was education but it was the fact that yes we are a constitutional republic but we have to remember that principles, the principles are the princi- democratic principles of equality. So right. democratic mm-hmm. has to be used, but it's not referring to the type of government. Mm-hmm. So anti-Americanism, when, when I read this and I said, sure, if they put enough of this in, they've made the United States as the aggressor and, and the many of the territories mm-hmm. acquired through conflict and mm-hmm. conflict aggressor. Now, <clears throat> In our textbooks, we've made America the aggressor, and the textbooks follow the Palestinian narrative. So that means over here, the America, the United States, is the aggressor, mm-hmm. and we were against the Indians. We were aggressor against the people of color. We were against that, and parallel to that is mm-hmm. the United States is the grand saint, is the Lord, the great Satan, and Israel mm-hmm. is the Satan and the Palestinian narrative, which propagated completely in the textbooks, is that Israel is the aggressor and yes. the Palestinians are those that are being trampled. So there mm-hmm. is a sick, a very sick, <clears throat> a sick uh, comparison there because it shows that it is leftist against America and it is leftist against Israel. And it mm-hmm. took a Long time for people trying to separate. Well, they never put together that anti-Semitism, mm-hmm. anti-Zionism mm-hmm. belong. That it's like the, a, a disconnect. So now mm-hmm. they fi- they finally put it together. 
So that was an example, but this is something that you and I have discussed over again, over and over again. And I found it in many books, but here I found that in the section on the media, on the constitution in this McGraw-Hill book, and this is a quote, the constitution is an outdated document. It is no mm. longer, end quote. Now, mm. what, what is that in an, in an American textbook? That is a direct, it is a direct attack on the constitution. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, we have to look at indoctrination overt and covert. Is it open in your face or do you have to read very carefully and you find the indoctrination? With right. that, we have got, we have, I think we have gone out of <clears throat> the covert indoctrination where you had to read very carefully and it was an adjective or it was a little a half truth and then everything has become open to the view mm -hmm. and nation and that is what what we have missed because it is in the it is the i believe the state's responsibility and their boards of education and all of, and all of them that are in charge that when the indoctrination of critical race theory, it, when these three, the critical race theory and the Black Lives Matter, <clears throat> when they became part of, or the direction of the, um, the education system, there, <clears throat> it's all plugs have been pull, pulled out. And mm -hmm. there, there's no attempt to, to hide anything or to make it you know it's it's no longer snuck in it's there right in your face but this is right. one of one of the most uh <clears throat> dangerous because it's opened up a whole new study mm -hmm. and it's the irrelevancy of the constitution and with the constitution you have to destroy the the only way to destroy a constitutional republic is to destroy the constitution. Right. And once you do that, all of the amendments, all of the civil rights, all of the everything, the God-given rights and and all of that disappear and the country disappears and that's Well, we're looking at it Dr. Alfonsi, excuse me for interrupting because this is an important point that we have to make to our listening audience. Dr. Alfonsi is absolutely 100% correct. If we look at what the left is doing to our republic, they are chipping away, dismantling our constitution, this republic, one step at a time. We have, we have no rights. I mean, just turn on the evening news or the afternoon news, whenever you watch to get your news, and look at what this government, this current administration is doing. They are completely dismantling and taking away our rights. I just read where a, a reporter or an editor with the Jewish Press Agency early, earlier today or last week, he was arrested for participating in the January 6th incident. He, just, he was just arrested and he's being falsely accused of stirring up strife and creating the havoc that happened on January 6th. This Merrick Garland, they are not done. They're going after everyone. This is a reporter. He has the right under our Constitution to run a story, to seek the facts, to print what he has found or what he has seen. And this guy was arrested, a Jewish guy. Was it because he was Jewish or was it because he was not printing the narrative that our government thinks is true? It's very frightening. And if, if a reporter can lose his constitutional rights, ladies and gentlemen, you and I are next. Our children will not know freedom. And I so loved, last night I was on a, a call doing a Bible study, and we were talking about this issue, and I read to them again the Declaration of Independence and the duty, it is our duty to respond in kind to what is happening. We govern, 
We the people govern our nation's affairs. It is not the other way around. And this administration, this current administration, is robbing us and robbing our our children, our posterity, of growing up and raising their families in a free republic. It's very disturbing. And, you know, we go back, and Dr. Alfonsi, you've been, you've been doing this research for a long time. I go back to 1980. That's when I started to see the change. Although the change was happening in the universities before they got to the classrooms, to K-12 through classrooms. But it was in re- researching these textbooks, it was about 1980, 1982 when we started to see the anti-American narrative being peddled to in the in America's classrooms because up until that time we were taught to that that we were a republic we were taught about american exceptionalism but not our children are not being taught the history that those of us who graduated from high school before 1980 one of the reasons that they're not, it's not being taught, if, if I look objectively at the, the, the place of, of America in, in the world now, we have, we have lost the stature. We've lost our position of uh, moral and ethical and military greatness because we cannot, if the moral and the ethical and the military greatness going hand in hand was, I believe, exactly what was meant by American exceptionalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we look now, we have no we have no standing. I'm, I'm, I'm it, it hurts me to say it that way, but the truth is, America has lost its world standing. It is it has been the only way one can do that, and they did that. They this whole leftist cabal Mm -hmm. did very, very well over a long period of time. It took time to do it, Mm -hmm. but did it successfully. And the thing is about America now, Mm -hmm. no longer the greatest world power, but also that means missing from the world now is the ethical and moral strength that once was America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you, when we teach our children, if we would, if we were to teach history correctly, we would, we would teach exactly what went on. It is not mm-hmm. an, it, it's it's not. They must change the history to destroy the United States. Right. However, this is the most dangerous, the most dangerous. I think it is truly the most dangerous period because we have used, when I say we, the the United States has used education Mm -hmm. as a weapon by which to turn its children via civics, to turn our young people against Mm -hmm. the institution, against the Christian, the Judeo-Christian tradition, against everything that made this a strong nation and that mm-hmm. go, and we this is what we've done and we <clears throat> the textbooks the textbooks don't teach and this is I you and I've spoken about this I no longer use the the verb you know they do not teach the textbooks indoctrinate and that is that is something which destroys because you indoctrinate an ism an ideology, and that is what education in America has become. But the emphasis on the anti-Semitism, which you wanted me to address, and which I, I do address, mm-hmm. that that the emphasis on the anti-Semitism, unfortunately, if we do not remove, see, my question is, if we can pass legislation, no CRT is taught, no this, no that is taught, it does not remove it from the minds of those who have already been indoctrinated. The, the money that is being poured into this indoctrination of our education system 
is far beyond any money that's available to fight the indoctrination. And that's right. the big problem. And we have, we have the anti-Semitism. That's one part of it. And, and I'm not minimizing it at my of all people. But my big fear is that the, the, the American Christians do not understand that what happens to the Jews next will happen to them. That's because right. We are being taken over by what well, we have three streams going in the same direction, mm -hmm. communism, Islamism, and globalism. We have mm -hmm. three streams, all of which I, there's going to be a huge collision at the end to see which one is going to win out. But and and revisionism, like Holocaust revisionism, that's another aspect of the research that we did. Yes, and and that to me, until we address the issue, mm -hmm. our young people. I watch it over here, and I because we're having all these massive demonstrations. We haven't arrived at that point yet in America where there will be demonstrations in the street. And I don't know in which direction they will go because here they're going leftist and very few are mm -hmm. coming to it. But what I see, I know it cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, it cannot be only over here. What mm -hmm. is here, Lori, is an abundance of young people out in the streets with their parents missing school, taking out at night during the day. Um, young people, I would say not, I haven't seen them as small as elementary school, but I would say could be up through the sixth grade, but definitely mm -hmm. middle school and definitely high school. And that is what, what tells me that the indoctrination mm -hmm. success. And when you see when you said people always said, oh, the Arabs, the Arabs use their, you know, it's child abuse what the Arabs do. They they take their children at and they become standing targets. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. well, we are doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. because we, we are now indoctrinating in the United States and our education system, the violence, we're indoctrinating, no loyalty to the United States. And if it comes to they have to pour out onto the street, we see that it is it is no longer, it, it's not something that has happened in the United States, but it is something mm -hmm. fear is definitely, we've set the ground for that to happen. Yeah. So that that is why I think that we have, we have to answer the question. There are two questions in my mind. The, the tremendous outpouring of funds, we unless the government, and now we have the problem because it is the government that is fostering the downfall of America's liberty of everything. Mm -hmm. So the government is certainly not going to put money into combating the leftist takeover of the United States. And yet you have all these people that are funding it. So it's, it's like, it's a trap mm -hmm. because here, as an example, the work I'm doing right now is on the money that's coming from the State Department over here to mm -hmm. fund the direction of, of Prime Minister Netanyahu's government. And mm -hmm. even his assassination that mm -hmm. came today. Now, when you look out on the street and you see all these young people and you have a Supreme Court, which is leftist, and you have generations now, the the parents and the children, and you don't have there. There are no demonstrations coming out to combat it. Mm. And when mm. they want to have a demonstration, I mean, they had a small demonstration, and the way it was, bring your own flag and an umbrella because it was supposed to rain. So when you look at that, I said they, the leftists don't have to bring their own flag. Where they go, the flags are waiting for them. Mm -hmm. one, yeah. one example. So that's what the textbooks are doing. And there's there's one thing that I want to, and then we'll do a little bit on the, the anti-Semitism using the Holocaust, because that is something we have never seen, and we've seen it now in several books. But just to finish about the Constitution, 
there, there is a new language and it's a very dangerous language because when you look at it, it doesn't seem like a, an assault on anything. And it's in this McGraw-Hill American Democracy Now, which is 2019. And the, the, the chapter or the paragraph in the chapter is the changing face of American democracy. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. always, you have to handle the word democracy. And, and that's, that's, that's something which in many, in many cases, it's semantics because democracy, you can't do away with democratic principles, but it's the changing face of the American constitutional republic. So we can work on that, but that's only, that's semantics. I, right. It worry me like the following sentence, which is the constitution as a living evolving document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is the essence of the attack on the on the constitution you make it right. living pulsing evol evolving document mm -hmm. whatever you want mm -hmm. and then the basis of what the founding fathers created they created checks and balances in how amendments could be made and that is how they protected the constitutional republic and prevented it from becoming a democracy right but right nowhere in the constitution do you find that the Constitution referred to as a living, evolving document? It's always inanimate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this textbook instead turns it the, the other way and the process of amendment be, it's, becomes in, an evolving document. The amend, it's the people who can change it. Right. So right. I think that this is a tremendous, it, it is something that is tremendous and when you and I did that, we did that study one day on, on the, the American bar, uh, the legal system, and you realize that the constitutional, the constitutional lawyers who are supposed to be defending the Constitution are defending the, are defending the demise of the Constitution. It's, it's some of the, the biggest names, and I, when I read what they write, and I'm like, where is this coming from? Yeah, it's frightening. It's frightening. Yeah. So that is something which, um, which I have to, to tell, I have to say honestly that, that the desire that I have is to try to figure out how we actually, it, it's more than a desire, it's, it's the necessity for people mm -hmm. like you and like me and others that we address this much more, much more openly that what is the constitution? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why do we need to protect it? We, right. in my mind, it's beyond, it's beyond just teaching it. We have to protect it because that is the lifeline of the United States of America, and it is really it's in danger. So that that is something which <laughs> I find that yeah. is well, important because you lose the, you we lose all of our freedoms when we lose the constitution, and that's and, right. And the critical race theory has put up the model, and and we we have to do something about that. Absolutely, and that's why PJTN exists, um, Dr. Alfonsi. We've got about ten minutes left, and I do want you to touch on the issue of revisionist um, uh, or Holocaust revisionism because this is a growing problem as well. And so, if you can quickly just um, summarize for us the content that you found that is egregious. And then we're going to talk, we're going to finish up um, by talking about how our audience can get involved, what we the people must do to take back local control, to take back state control, to take back our nation, control of our nation. There is a, an, a, a strategy to do that. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So Dr. Alfonsi, again, the Holocaust revisionism, this is another shocking aspect of the research that you've been doing that I've seen. Um, let's elaborate on that, please. Yes. Um, and I thank you for, for, it's, it's not that I'm thanking you for caring. It's part of the mission of the, of your organization, but the fact that you allow me to speak about it and we put it out to the public is something that I want your your members to understand that uh, the more that this is hidden, the more it becomes the way of life. And this is where Pearson 
and this is actually the the this is the Pearson the 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 evil where evil and brilliance come together and it is Pearson that actually has built what I call systemic anti anti-Semitism mm -hmm. and Pearson is Afrocentric which means anything in Europe doesn't count and he that the the, the book the the publisher endorses the Black Lives Matter ideology. Mm -hmm. and it what I found in the teaching of the Holocaust, the second in the, the book that I dealt with, several books, but this in this one, what I found is that the this is what makes it dangerous. The Holocaust is well researched and it's relatively accurate and it's it's carefully presented relative to the sensibilities of the young people who will read it. That is it's mm -hmm. carefully so Pearson had to do something in order to revise the Holocaust. The first thing which he did was to remove Judaism as a world religion. Mm -hmm. So Pearson, and this is something which we have to identify, that Pearson right. removed it as a world religion, and he's the publisher of anti-Israelism. But we, considering what, what Pearson has done with the Holocaust. And I'm going to just take the quotes because that's what why I was quiet for a moment so I could get to the quotes. The, the first quote which I came upon opened the window to Pearson's a deadly agenda. Now, how can you have an agenda on the Holocaust? And I say it up front, Pearson's, Pearson's agenda was to make the Jews in Germany, guilty and enemies of the state. Mm -hmm. the quote in a then the next step, and this, this is what frightens me the most, is that Pearson has brought that over to the United States, to the American Jews, looking at anti-Semitism and looking at the American Jews and what Pearson has done. Mm -hmm to make the Jews of America the enemies of the state, of the yes. United States and of the government. That is critical race theory, that is Black Lives Matter, but that is how Pearson manipulates the, the, the Holocaust is to take everything and turn it into that the Jews were the enemy of the state. Mm -hmm. That's why Germany rounded them up, executed them, Etc., and then that is what Pearson has done in, his, in its textbooks is precisely that brought it to America, looked at the anti Semitism, and by removing religion from the Constitution, the rights. What Pearson has done is that he presents the Jews as the enemy of the United States and of the right. government. Mm -hmm. So that, that is what that is really what uh, what I found mm -hmm. and what they Pearson and I'm I'm just reading some this Pearson in its text in its textbooks refers to the Jews as quote ethnic outsiders. That's mm -hmm. no in the way that mm -hmm. in, in the textbook presented the Jewish immigrants into America and. What, what is terrible in that, you, he, Pearson is building the, the, using the Holocaust to create that belief that the American Jews are the enemy to the state. Now, I will say, honestly, people say to me, how come the, the Jews are supporting this and this and that? And I will answer very honestly that our textbooks and our life in America has not made it okay to be a Jew for at least two generations. Mm. It has been it has been shoved down the throats that they are outsiders, they are different, the Jewish holidays, everything. So it has been safer. And I'm not making apologetics. I can't explain why the Christians are not coming out either. But 
you ask, not you, but one asks me this question and I will say very honestly, it has not been okay to be a Jew in America. I, when I grew up, it was not okay. It was not as bad, but the anti-Semitism was there. The problems in the schools were there. The holidays, when the high holidays, the tests mm -hmm. were given. It, it has never been, and I'm sorry to say it because I, I love America deeply, but do, can I say honestly, it's been okay to be a Jew? No, when I, was, when I applied to go to George Washington University for my bachelor's degree, I was called in to the, to the, the office to meet with one of the counselors and with the deans. We need to know whether you identify yourself as a Jewish American or as an American Jew. Mm. And I said, mm. you're, asking, you're asking me this? He said, you had, to fill it in. you had to fill it in and you didn't fill it in. I said, why should I fill it in? Well, how do you see yourself now? I started college, with, <laughs> I graduated high school when I was 16. So was at 17, I, and when I went, you know, I was admitted to, to university, I, I, I knew who I was and I mm -hmm. was not say what they wanted me to say, but I got called into the dean. We need to know, and we have to write mm -hmm. this down. How do you identify yourself mm -hmm. as a Jewish American mm -hmm. or as an American Jew? And I told the dean then, and I wrote it down, that his use of the language is incorrect. I said, because the only thing that's stable in my life is my identity as a Jew. The other word is where I live. I was born mm -hmm. in America. I was a Jew. I was born in America. Therefore, I'm an American Jew. If I had been born in France, I would still be a Jew, but I would be mm -hmm. a French. And so <laughs> it, was, it was never OK to be a Jew. And, and the parents, I, can't, I don't fault parents because whatever they, they had to do, they, most American parents and Jewish parents protected their children. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult when it was difficult for their children to, to take tests and pass tests, everything. Mm -hmm. came, okay, parrot back what the teacher says, but after too many years of parroting back, the truth is lost. So let me ask you something. Do you think, because this brings something up in my mind, because, you know, when we were addressing or trying to confront the Holocaust revisionism that we saw even when we were working on the standards for the state of Florida, and, and I will mention to our audience that our recommendations, PJTN's recommendations, that's the recommendations that Dr. Alfonsi and I worked on, were not adopted, especially as it pertains to, specifically as it pertains to the Holocaust education K through 12, which was passed by law in the state of Florida, was a requirement. But do you think because of this, this anti-Semitism, that many Jews in the United States would rather assimilate and be nondescript, not be recognizable, and so go with the flow, push the narrative that's the easiest narrative to push so that we don't draw attention to ourselves. Do you think that that's why we see this, this assimilation, if you will, process within the Jewish community, and, and that even that the, the, the Holocaust, Florida Holocaust Task Force rejected our recommendations to teach K through five specifically, that that was the portion that was our recommendations that were left out, teaching about um, the Jewish culture, Jewish holidays, um, you know, things that young children K through five could, could, um, could grasp and understand and relate to in order to address future anti-Semitism by us not. I mean, we're, we're celebrating Christian holidays. We're cel celebrating Muslim holidays in the public school system, um, Kwanzaa, African holidays. But here we're, we're recommending, why don't we do this with our Jewish community? Why aren't we sharing these bits of culture and tradition and holidays with the majority of kids? Because who are the majority of kids in the classrooms in Florida? They're mostly Christian kids. But we were rejected 
our, our recommendations were, re- were rejected. Do you think that it's because of this desire to assimilate, not to draw attention, for fear that it would cause anti, uh, a rise of anti-Semitism? I, I will answer you very honestly on this with three things. No, um, I think that they were rejected because they put into danger the indoctrination of critical race theory at the K through five level. I mm. think that, that's first, and we had already, that ha, that's already in the school system. Mm. That's, I, I think it's that. Mm. This, I will say, and then and you, you will do as you wish, wish with this because it's been bothering me since this happened. Um, I'm not even, go- I will put in third place the, you know, basic anti-Semitism, but mm-hmm. I, that one of the problems is that because these recommendations came from proclaiming justice to the nations and it came from an evangelical organization, it came from someone whose name is Lori Cardoza Moore and someone whose name, last name is Alfonsi, that, um, there were two lines of discrimination. One is the discrimination that was put into the system and into the the adoption system by the honest two major Jewish organizations that felt it was not it was not right that it was being done by the in the hands of of, of a Christian organization. I felt that from the beginning. I also felt that <laughs> those organizations were left wing. So in the in addition to their agenda, the at the base of any any left wing movement is the protection of CRT and mm-hmm. grade one through five to have the Holocaust taught correctly and have some stature put back into and put the Jews back into society. Mm-hmm. I felt that that is the second reason. Right. And The third reason I will say that we have not reached the point in uh, in education where personal anti-Semitism, whether it be Christian anti-Semitism now Mm -hmm. being probably of greater force than Christian anti-Semitism, is the Islamic anti-Semitism. I think that um, the Holocaust teaching of the Holocaust was uh, they didn't want it, they didn't want the Holocaust to be Jewish. They wanted it to be uh, an example, an example of um, genocide, but the mm-hmm. specificity to the Jews needed to be removed. And I thought we, I think, I believe that we were up, we were up against that. I, I admire like Governor DeSantis, I admire tremendously, like we were able to put the word Shoah in so that we were able to differentiate between mm-hmm. genocide and the and the 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 this Jewish specificity of the Holocaust. Right. But I think I think that the main reason, and you're giving me the opportunity to to speak about it, I think that the main the main reason there is that that you put, to put it in there. It's a tremendous challenge mm-hmm. to see because it's that's where that's where the indoctrination starts. So that's that's how I feel about it. Dr. Alfonsi, um, I know I've kept you longer than what we normally do. And I I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to explain this to our audience. And we are going to have to um, sign off. But I would just want to reiterate to the audience that Dr. Alfonsi made some very important points throughout this whole interview. I want to encourage you to share this podcast with your family and friends. This is critically important because we are losing our republic to our children because our children have been targeted for indoctrination. They are going to destroy our republic through the next generation unless those of us who remember true history, 
who stand in the face of anti Israelism and anti Semitism. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, our enemies label us the great Satan and the little Satan. There's a reason why we are, the United States and Israel are so rejected by these leftists, these communists, these Marxist groups around the globe. They are trying to take us down. And we, the people, just like that Declaration of Independence, you got to read it, ladies and gentlemen, again. Make sure you get an original copy so you don't read the, the ones that are out there that omit fact. But we've got to take back our control of our government, and it's going to happen with us. We don't have the luxury of having, you know, the government fund this initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going state by state. Our campaign is county by county, state by state, because if we can take back our states, we are doing this. We just did this with Governor DeSantis in Florida. Thank God we just submitted the white paper with some of the egregious content that is still being taught in Florida schools. We're, we're doing this in Tennessee. We're doing it in Texas. We're doing it in Ohio. God willing, very soon it'll be in Arizona and, and also in Northern California in San Francisco. But we can't do this work. The research that, that Dr. Alfonsi does is crucial to our success in taking back our country because we have to show parents and citizens, taxpaying citizens, what we are funding to destroy the republic. So we can't do it without you. We need your financial support. If you are not a PJTM watchman, um, if you're not a monthly donor, then I want you to please consider making a monthly contribu contribution, making a monthly commitment to enable Sandra and I to continue to do this work, our whole team. And I, I want you all to know how grateful we are if you will consider, you know, if, if anyone listening to this podcast would like to underwrite this program with a major contribution, this is not going to be a one and done program. This is going to be something that we have to do and help inspire parents and citizens across the country to take action in their state. So in closing, Dr. Alfonsi, I want to thank you again for joining us today. Um, I hope um, our audience, I hope our, our audience found the program to be informative. We're going to post this podcast on our website and all of our podcast platforms so that you can share with your family and friends. Additionally, if you would like to get a copy of the white paper PJTN published for Governor DeSantis, please go to our website at pjtn.org. Go to, when you go to the website, go to the Get Involved tab at the top of the page, click on it, and scroll down to the bottom of the page and look for white paper. Please share this information with your family and friends, with your state legislators, especially the chairman and members of the education committee in your House of Representatives in your state and your Senate, um, your state Senate representatives on the Education Committee. Remember, even though this white paper exposes anti-Semitic content in Florida textbooks, these textbooks, as you heard Dr. Alfonsi say, are being used across the U.S. As PJTN Watchmen, we have a biblical mandate to stand against the ungodly rising Marxist threat that is destroying this nation and other Western nations threatening our Judeo-Christian values and promoting anti-Semitism. We cannot remain silent. God warned the prophet Ezekiel about the duty, the responsibility of the watchman, that the watchman is supposed to stand watch. And if the watchman sees an enemy advancing, it is the duty of the watchman to alert the inhabitants of the city, to warn them, to prepare because the enemy is advancing. And if we fail, to sound the alarm, all of us in the listening audience now, we're now watchmen. Now we know the truth. And now we each have a biblical duty to warn our, our family, to warn our friends and neighbors about this, this threat that is coming, to, that has already arrived on our shores. As a watchman, you can sound the alarm and warn others by simply sharing the podcast with your family and friends. So please share and like this podcast to help sound the alarm in your community. Remember, Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminds us that silence in the face of evil 
is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. So don't forget to join us for next week's podcast as we continue this conversation about combating the rise of anti-Semitism and taking back local control of our communities and our children's education. I want to also remind you that if you have not signed up to become a PJTM Watchman, you can help support this mission through our award-winning documentaries and Focus on Israel programs, as well as more programs like this for just $20 a month. So go to our website at pjtn.org to watch our programs and listen to our podcasts. With your generous monthly donation, you can ensure that PJTN remains on the front lines and in the headlines, but we can't do it without your faithful prayers and financial support. I hope that you will prayerfully consider supporting our mission as we educate to activate Jews, Christians, and all people of conscience to stand on the front lines of this all-encompassing war. God bless you, and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren, the State of Israel, and these United States. Thank you again for joining me on this edition of Proclaiming Justice. Please share this podcast with your family and friends. For more information about how you can get involved, please visit our website at pjtn.org. As a PJTN Watchman, you can help us keep up the fight to preserve our freedom for our children and their children for such a time as this.